Hello, we're here at Lake Champlain Chocolates. My name is Kirk Weed, and today I'm going to show you how to make raspberry truffles. This is a very popular candy. Um, if you enjoy truffles, you enjoy a nice high-quality ganache, one of the things you will like about this is how easy it is to make. To make a good quality ganache uh, is not difficult to do at all. The important thing is to have the right ingredients. So you want to start with a high-quality chocolate. The important thing in choosing a chocolate for your ganache is to choose a chocolate that you like to eat. If you are familiar with it, you like the chocolate, you think it's delicious, use that chocolate. Some people prefer a darker 80%, 70%. Um, some people can even prefer a milk chocolate. That can be used in a ganache as well. For a fruit ganache, I would recommend the dark chocolate, however. So I'm using my nice dark chocolate. You want to start with your chocolate tempered or at least only slightly melted. And when you melt your chocolate, you use a double boiler. The water should be warm, not hot. It shouldn't be so hot that you can't touch the sides. If it's too hot to touch the sides, it's too hot for the chocolate. You only want to melt it up to just above 90 degrees. You don't want to get it any warmer than that. So once your chocolate is melted, take the butter and you add it to the chocolate. Now make sure the butter is at room temperature, nice and soft, so that it comes right out of the cup easily. And then if it, the butter is soft enough, you don't need a whisk, you don't need a Hobart or KitchenAid, you simply mix it by hand and use your spatula, mix it around until it's fairly well incorporated, a little lumpy at this point, doesn't matter. Nicely mixed in. Then you want to add whatever flavor ingredient you're using. Our recipe calls for raspberry jam to make a raspberry truffle. I'm using a strawberry champagne jam, a fancy uh, one that we happen to have around here in our research and development lab, so I thought, why not use it? You can, again, use whatever flavor jam you prefer to get a nice fruit flavor, something exotic or something very familiar. Again, the higher quality jam you use, the better this is going to turn out. The jam should be at room temperature. I warmed it slightly in a microwave. And at this point, it's a good idea to switch to a whisk so that you get the chocolate nicely mixed in with the butter and the jam. Okay, it's starting to get a little stiff. If it gets too stiff, you can simply warm it up and that will work. I'm going to now add my cream. Again, I've warmed the cream to room temperature at least. If it's slightly warmer than room temperature, that's okay too. If you mix this with a KitchenAid, it works just fine. It's actually easy to do on the KitchenAid, a little easier than this. But I wanted to show you by hand so that you could see that this is a fairly simple process. It's a little adventurous to add this much cream at once. It can make a mess, but this way we incorporate it in quickly. And pretty soon we get a nice ganache. Okay, now that we've got our ganache nicely mixed, it's nice and smooth. You can see the, the jam in there. It's very nice. You take the, the batch as it sits and pour it right into a sheet pan. And simply spread it out so it has a chance to cool. The best way to cool this is leave it out at room temperature for about two hours, maybe three or four hours, depending on um, the room again. But leaving it at room temperature helps it to cool evenly. Or you can put it in a refrigerator at this point. For less amount of time, you want to be careful not to overcool it. If it gets too stiff, it'll be too hard for our next step. What we're going to do at this point is let it cool sufficiently so we can cut it into small pieces, hand roll it into balls, and dipping them in cocoa powder and powdered sugar. Okay, now that we've let our ganache cool completely, uh, it's nice and firm to the touch, firm all the way through. Pizza knife is a very easy way to cut the ganache. If the pizza knife comes up messy, you know it's too warm. Now I'm, I'm wearing gloves to keep the, the product from becoming contaminated by my hands. You don't have to wear gloves if you've got clean hands at home. And then you simply drop the product into some cocoa powder. Now, as you can see, you would simply repeat that process to get all of these nicely rolled. This is a fun activity to do with your family, to get the kids involved, and uh, we'll show you how to get the 
the cocoa powder in there nicely. Very simple, just roll it around or the powdered sugar. Very simple. And you can use a fork to do this or you can use your finger. And an authentic truffle is supposed to look ugly. Um, it shouldn't look too neat. It should look like the mushroom, the truffle. So you don't need to worry about perfectly round balls. Again, if you like a perfectly round ball, make them perfectly round. But if you are like me and you like to have something that looks delicious, then a little bit of variety is nice. Let's see, if you did up this whole thing, you'd have a nice sheet pan, a nice tray full of, of, of fresh confections for your guests. Very easy to do, a lot of fun, and delicious results. Thank you.